welcome back i hope everybody's doing good today i'm doing great and i'm back with another video for you guys and in this video right here i'm gonna be starting like a mystery shop 101 series on my channel where i show you guys how to do mystery shops we're gonna go ahead and start off with my favorite type of mystery shop and that is gonna be a banking mystery shop okay what i'm gonna do is show you guys the actual summary of the real mystery shop that i'm gonna do at a different bank and then i'm gonna actually go to a random bank and pretty much just act out that same mystery shop so that way you guys can actually hear exactly how it goes okay and then we'll get into the evaluations and all of that stuff as well okay definitely comment below on the different types of mystery shops you want to see i definitely recommend that you guys go back and watch my other mystery shopping videos i have a ton of them but i talk about how i do the bank shops and all i do is pretend that i'm interested in learning information about their checking accounts okay that's it i'm not going to be actually opening up an account although there are mystery shops where you can actually open up an account but that's not what this is this is simply inquiring about the different checking accounts okay so there are several scenarios to choose from okay so when they're talking about scenarios it can be you know you're new to the area and you're looking for a new account you can also have a scenario of you know you're dissatisfied with your current bank and so yeah that's pretty much it straightforward super easy the scenario that i'm going to use is that i'm dissatisfied with my current current bank so we're gonna go ahead and head over to a random bank and I'm gonna go ahead and do the shop so let's good morning how are you good um I wanted to get some information about your checking accounts Yes, ma'am. Here's some brochure. This is the brochure that I have here. We have here the personal checking account. These are the different accounts that we have, and these are the services that you can get from each. I can give you a copy. Do you have like a copy. banker I can speak with? or? Yeah, no, she's the only person that we have. Uh, just give her time because I think she's with a customer on the phone. But I'll give you a copy while you are with Okay, her. that's perfect. Okay. Thank you so much. Hey, how you doing, ma'am? Good. Um, I want to get some information about your checking accounts. Okay. Yeah, what I have. Information you need? Yeah, just you know, like your fees and all of that stuff, and cause. That's it. Okay. So you just want me to look at this? No, 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 no. That was saying that was it. Okay. You say you need to get information, additional yeah. information outside. Yeah. Of that? Yes, okay. ma'am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I currently have um, Wells Fargo. Yes. I just wanted to learn more about you guys', you guys accounts and how to avoid fees and all of that good stuff. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So on our account, so we're speaking in terms of the personal ones, as long as you set up your online banking, um, you do your um, e-statements once you set it up, that's a way to avoid the fees. Okay. Now, some of them, if you have more than a certain amount of transactions, then there's another fee that's going to be associated with it, even if you do set up online banking. Okay, as long as you set up your online banking and your e-statements, you don't have to worry about those fees at all. You should call it as many times you want to and make many deposits if you want. You can also do mobile deposits. It goes up. It's a cap on it, of course, and every bank has that. So ours is $3,000. As long as the check is under that, you should be okay. It is subject to a hold. Okay. And that hold is different from our hold if we came inside the bank. And does it take long to open up the account, or? It doesn't take that long, depending on um, really the individual. And I say that because if they have charge on it, they recently moved. It requires us to get a new address by providing a utility bill from a water company, electric, gas, something like that. Okay. Keep in mind that for the first 60 days of the account, all checks that's put in there is subject to a nine-day business hold. We don't include Saturday and Sunday because those are not business days. So if you pay the bill today, it wouldn't be available until Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, next week. We got to get to know your history and see. Yeah, make sure you're legit, right? right. Well, that too. <laughs> <laughs> so, Understandable. Do you have like a business card I can take with me? I or? do. And do you have to make an appointment? No, ma'am. So okay, just walk after, right in. Yeah, after COVID was over, well, some people still say it's COVID. Mm -hmm. But after COVID was over, um, they could just come in. Come on in. Yeah, they have a little bag of money gone. Okay, thank you so much. You I appreciate welcome. you. It was nice talking All to right, you. All right, you too. And have a good day. You too. Thank you.
Okay, guys, so we just finished the mystery shop, and as you guys heard, it's super quick. I was in there for about 10 minutes, so there are a few things that I want to go over with you guys regarding that mystery shop, okay? So one thing that I want to make sure that you guys know is the purpose of this particular mystery shop is to see if the banker not only, you know, sits you down and tells you about the accounts, but also if they go over certain, you know, disclosures that they may have. It's going to vary depending on the bank, and they also want the bankers to ask for your business, okay? So even though you're not not opening an account today and of course you're not going to mention anything about opening up an account today they want to see if the banker is going to ask you if you want to open up an account today so whatever guidelines they have that's what you're going to be looking for it's not a matter of you going in here and you know trying to pick apart every single thing that the banker does you just are looking to see if the banker does what is required of them in the guidelines that's it that's all okay so if you noticed the teller is the person that spoke with me first and she proceeded to, you know, give me a brochure regarding the accounts. And in some cases, like again, everything is guideline based. All you're doing is following the guidelines. In some cases, I would be able to use that as the mystery shop, but it's going to depend on the guidelines. So if they say, you know, if the teller helps you, you can accept that as a mystery shop. There are going to be some banks that say, no, even if the teller tries to help you, you would still ask to speak with a banker. And that's going to be the case in the shop, in the real shop that I'm going to be doing. I have to speak with the banker. So, so let's go ahead and get into some of the different types of questions that would be on an evaluation okay and these questions are pretty straightforward so for example what date did you complete the shop what time did you enter the branch was the branch clean these are simple questions that you have to answer you won't really get into much detail until you get into your visit summary okay so you know were you greeted how many customers you will need to be looking around and making sure you're taking note of that and all you need to do that is your phone and you know or whatever way you take notes okay you need to keep track of your wait time so the time that I went to sit down and wait on the banker that's when my wait time started if the banker doesn't tell you their name of course you would you know look on their name tag get the banker's name now when they're asking you to describe the banker the mystery shopping company will have you know black white you know tall average size you know color of hair they'll have that in there for you and all you have to do is just check off you know what applies to that banker now when they're asking what was the demeanor of the banker they'll have the different adjectives in there whether it be friendly angry you know whatever the case may be the questions on the evaluation are super simple like I said these particular questions right here don't take long at all so after you answer those questions you will have to do a visit summary okay this is where it's really important to make sure that you took notes and that you remember everything and also that you type you know with accuracy and everything some people when they do their summaries sometimes they will repeat things that were already answered in the initial questions that I just showed you guys I typically don't do that I cover just a basic summary of what happened so so based off this visit this would be my quick summary I entered the bank at 9 41 a.m i was instantly greeted by a teller behind the teller line she asked how she could help me i told her i was interested in getting information about their checking accounts she asked if i needed info for personal or business i told her personal she then told me she would give me a brochure listing the different accounts that they have she showed me the brochure and made a copy for me i asked her if i could speak with the banker she told me i could and that it would be a little while since the banker was on the phone she told me to have a seat and wait on the banker after a brief five minute wait, the banker walked over to me. She asked how she could help me. I told her I was interested in info about their accounts. She pointed to the brochure that the teller gave me and told me, that's it. She asked me if I needed any additional info that wasn't on the brochure. I told her yes and that I wanted to know how to avoid monthly fees. We sat at her desk and I told her I bank with Wells Fargo and was looking to bank elsewhere. She proceeded to tell me about their accounts. She mentioned a specific checking account and told me how to avoid fees. She also went over their deposit hold policies. At the end of the interaction, she did not ask for any follow-up info and she did not ask me if I wanted to open the account that day. I asked her for a business card and she gave it to me. She thanked me and I left the branch. So that's pretty much a quick summary of everything that happened. So they will have follow-up questions after your summary. So most of the time, the follow-up questions are based on your interaction with the banker. Would you open an account at this branch? And that's an extremely important question and you have to really listen to it because they're saying based on your interaction with the banker, they're not asking about, you know, how would you feel about the accounts? Would you actually open an account with this bank because they have good accounts? They're saying based on your interaction with the banker, would you open an account at this branch? I said I would not open an account at this branch initially 
the banker was content with me using the account brochure that the teller gave me instead of her explaining the accounts to me. She did a good job of explaining everything. However, she did not ask any probing questions to help her learn what type of account would be right for me. So my response is only based off what they're looking for. It's not personal against the lady or anything like that. It's simply based off what they are asking for, okay? When I said, I'd like to get some information about your accounts, she pointed to the paper and said, that's it not what they're supposed to do when you ask for information about the accounts even if you are holding a paper that has information about their accounts they're supposed to sit you down and talk to you about your accounts she didn't ask me any questions about you know what type of you know what type of transactions do you do you know do you deal with a lot of cash she didn't ask me anything like that about my deposit relationships with other banks and she also didn't ask me for any follow-up information to call me back to see if later i'd want to open up the account so last but not least any type of paperwork that you received you can upload to the site this is the paper that the teller gave me. This is the lady's business card. I can upload this to the site and this is most likely going to be required to be uploaded. But sometimes the papers and things are not required to be uploaded. And that shop took 10 minutes. It will probably take 10 minutes to do the report. It took me maybe five to seven minutes to drive here. So 30 minutes time and I would have made $18. I would do a bunch of shops in one area. Probably would do probably around three or four mystery shops of that same type in that area maybe within a 10 mile radius okay so that's how you do it that's how you make you know some decent money mystery shopping okay oh so yeah that's pretty much it guys i hope that this video has been helpful make sure to leave a like make sure to leave a comment if you have any questions leave those below you already know that i appreciate you guys so much for watching i'll see you guys in my next video and good luck mystery shopping